So, as before, we're going to want to form on this page. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and put the form inside a main element. So I could have like header, main, footer, that kind of thing. Sure. So inside main, I'll make a form. I'll go ahead and give it an ID. Uh, so we're going to be keeping track of some movies here. So I'm going to give it an ID of flick form, camel case like that. And the way frameworks like Foundation work is they've already written a bunch of CSS. And so if you make your markup conform to what they expect, then you'll get their styles for free. So we can read their documentation and see what classes we can apply to things and so on uh, to take advantage of the CSS they've already written. So maybe we can get, get some slightly more handsome forms. So here's the foundation documentation. Um, let's see. Let's look under general. There we go. Forms. Lucky guess. We set out to create an easy, powerful, and versatile form layout system. Cool. Let's see if it worked. All right. Form basics. Get out of my face. So there's a bunch of stuff here. Um, <laughs> label positioning. Inline labels and buttons. Attach extra controls to the left or right of an input field. So have them, uh, yeah, have it look like this. I kind of like that. Here's the label. Here's the field. Here's the button. Let's do this. So it looks like if you put it inside a div with a class of input group, um, ignore the label for now. If you put a class of input group field on the input, and then you make a div with an input group button class, and then you put a button inside that. Looks like that's how they're doing this. So let's go one step at a time here. We put the whole thing inside a div with a class of input group. Uh, using my handy dandy little image shortcuts, I can just type, what was it again? Input group dot input group. Just write the selector and it expands into the element. Div with the class of input group. Then we want an input with a class of input group field. So what if I say input dot input group field? Yep, sure enough. Input type equals text, class equals input group field. Then a div with a class of input group button and the button goes inside that. Okay. So dot input group button, and then we put a button inside there. And before we forget, we'll make this a button of type submit, which is the default, but it's good to remember that that's the default. And we'll make this button say, it's good to make it actually say something other than submit or go. If you can put a verb in there that actually tells you what's going to happen when you click this thing, that's good. So for example, I hate dialog boxes that say OK and cancel after they ask you a question. Um, it's better if it says something like save or don't save. It tells you what's going to happen when you actually click the thing. So I'm going to say add flick because that's what's going to happen when we click this button. Notice another way to make a button. There is an input of type button. Uh, input of, oh no, that is an input of type submit. There's that too. There's input of type submit. There's input of type button. Um, it's less flexible than the button element because you can't put anything but text inside it. But anyway, they also put a class of button on there because um, foundation includes some styles for buttons. And if you put the class of button on it, we'll get those rules. So let's go ahead and do that. It's already a button, but we'll put class button on there. And let's see how this thing looks. Hey, not bad. It's the full width. 
We got our button here. I'll switch over to the HTML here in a sec. Here we go. So we had a main element, have a form. Inside the form, we have an input group, div class input group. On our input, we put a class of input group field. On the button, uh, we put the button inside a div with a class of input group button. Gave the button itself a class of button. Cool. Not bad looking. Um, we can go ahead and do some of those usability things that we did last time, just right off the bat. When I refresh the page, the input doesn't have my focus yet, right? So let's autofocus it. At this point, this input is getting really long. Um, so I'm going to put some line breaks in here. When a, an HTML tag is getting too long, this is the way I, in, I tend to do it. I just put each attribute on its own line indented. And then at the end, I outdent the angle bracket to line up with the first one. This is also really common in React. So that's why I do it in this particular style. Um, you can put those line breaks wherever white space is ignored. But I think that looks nice and readable too. So I'm going to throw autofocus on there. And while we're at it, it doesn't make much sense to submit this form if you haven't typed anything in there. So let's go ahead and make it required. HTML5 also introduces a required attribute. And most modern browsers use that. Let's see it in action. There. It's auto-focused. I try to submit without typing anything, and it tells me, please fill out this field. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and put the line breaks inside the button thing here, too. It's also nice while I'm showing it on a big screen that isn't all that wide if each line doesn't go on and on and on. So got ourselves a fine-looking form here. Uh, but there's no label. Ever see forms where instead of having a separate label, it actually kind of labels it inside the text field itself, and then that goes away when you start typing in it? Anybody know what that's called? Placeholder. Yeah, how do I use that? Just an attribute. So on our input, we can add an attribute called placeholder. Whatever we type in there, name a flick. Now it shows up in kind of a light gray there. And as soon as I start typing, it goes away. If I backspace over it, it comes back. And this generally works um, accessibility-wise, too. Um, the main accessibility issue with this is potentially the contrast between that gray and the white. If people have uh, trouble seeing contrast, that, m those, that might be awfully close to white. You can target the placeholder with CSS and make it a different color if you need to. All right, good. Nice looking form. Let's commit it. Doesn't do anything yet. That's all right. We accomplished something. Add flick form. <laughs> 